Welcome to Remote Controlled Overkill. This video is about the new released battery discharger BD380 from SkyRC. Before we get into the video and the unboxing and testing of this discharger, this video is not sponsored. I purchased the device with my own hard earned money, so I will get my unbiased opinion of this device and I will not hesitate to mention negative aspects if I find any. At this point, please like and subscribe and feel free to comment. This way you can support me and my channel. Firstly about SkySC, a brand which is well known in the hobby industry and been around for quite some time now. Actually my first LiPo charger was the IMAX B6 I purchased over 12 years ago. Over the time I got some different SkySC products which always have been of good quality and never let me off. So my expectations for their newest and latest discharger are quite high. But now back to the SkySC BD380 battery discharger and analyzer. What a mouthful. This thing has 380 watts of power and a maximum discharge rate of 40 amps. It needs no input power and can run off the LiPo or battery alone to a maximum voltage of 30 volts. However, this discharger is capable of four different discharge modes. Constant current, constant resistant, constant power and constant voltage. In addition, you can connect the BD380 to your PC and use the SkySC Charger Master software, but only if you use their top-of-the-line charger T1000 or the newer D200neo. I don't have any of these chargers, but luckily the BD380 comes with Bluetooth connectivity and therefore you can use the free Sky Charger Master app for Android and iOS. The device itself is quite small and well built. Only the front is made out of plastic, the housing or the cage is made out of metal. Connection wise, the BD380 comes with XT60 to connect to your battery or alternatively to connect to the SkyRC T1000 or D200 Neo charger. In addition with the data cable and these chargers, you can use the SkyRC PC software to control the discharger. Otherwise, there is not much in the box. The unit itself with the XT60 data cable and the small instruction manual. There is also a USB-C socket on the back side of the discharger, I overlooked that first. I connected the BD380 to my computer and started the charger master software, but the device was not recognized. However, the discharger can connect to your phone via Bluetooth and this is what I'm going to use. To connect the SkyRC BD380 discharger via Bluetooth to your phone, you just have to download the app SkyCharger, activate Bluetooth and pairing is 4 times 8 and here we go. Oh, okay. There's a firmware update so we're gonna do this first. Please be careful when updating. I stumbled across some comments in the thread where the update failed and the guy had to refresh his unit. So just to be safe, keep your phone awake and near the unit until the update is finished. And this is the first batch of batteries I want to test with the discharger. These are all 2S hard case packs, 3 pairs of them, 6 amp hours, 7.2 amp hours and 8.2 amp hours. I use these batteries in my 8 scale electric GT car which is an iGT8e chassis in GT8 racing where the stint time was 8 minutes so LiPo performance was a crucial factor but last time I went racing was 2 or 3 years ago because there were big changes in my life. My wife gifted me a wonderful daughter but now it's time to go back to the track and to test the performance of my batteries. Here is the oldest pair of the three. The Gens Ace RS 6 amp hours with 70C discharge rate. Sometimes I used them in other SC cars and they felt quite good performance wise. The case is not bloated or deformed in any way, they are totally flat. Things look different with these 7.2 amp hours 2S1P LIFOs with 60C discharge rate, also from Gens Ace. When I used them in other SC cars, for example my Losi Tenacity DB Pro, I had to decrease the LiPo cutoff in the ESC, otherwise the runtime was really short. And the last time I used them in my iGT8, I had to completely shut the cutoff down. The cases are also bloated and they came to me that way years ago. Luckily I got a refund and was allowed to keep them, since then they have served as my training batteries. And lastly there are the Aeromax 8.2 amp hours with 60C discharge rate. 
which I have used the least only in some races in my 8 scale electric GT cars. And they felt quite good back then and delivered good performance, but this was 3 years ago, since then they were stored and only charged and discharged once to twice a year. I'm curious how they will perform after that long time. The internal resistant values of the Aeromax LiPos look quite promising. I charge them as a pair, the way I did it every time back then in the pits. I made myself a table where I will note some values of the discharging process. I noted the starting voltage and internal resistance of each cell, the discharge mode and the individual cell voltage after 1, 3, 5, 10 minutes and so on. I made this to have a better oversight comparing the different LiPos. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, the BD380 is capable of four different discharge modes. Constant current, constant resistance, constant power and constant voltage. With the CV mode, constant voltage, you can connect the power supply and test its accuracy and resilience. So you can use the BD380 to test your DC power supply or maybe an BEC for example. Theoretically, it should be able to test any DC power source above 5.9 volts. This may be a handy feature, but the main task is discharging and testing batteries with the other three modes CC, CR and CP. In CC mode, constant current, you can set an amperage for discharging your LiPo, which will be hold until your LiPo reaches the set shutoff voltage. This mode is best to test capacity and battery health. In CR mode, constant resistance, you can set a resistance between 1 to 100 ohms. This mode is useful for capturing the simulation of a constant resistive load and offering a realistic scenario for ever evaluating energy storage. And lastly, there is the CP mode, constant power. In this mode you can set a constant power output from 1 watt up to 380 watts. In this test I will discharge the LiPos in CC mode with a constant current of 10 amps. The cutoff voltage for 2S LiPo I set to 6.9 volts and left the safety shutoff time at 1 hour. The app is working flawlessly and shows you different data in real time. Now we come to the end of discharging the Aeromax LiPo. I set the shutoff voltage to 6.9 volts. After discharging your LiPo, you can save and show a diagram in the SkyRC app, which is very handy and shows you different parameters like the capacity, the milliampere hours which were used, the time that was consumed, and you can also switch between minutes, amp hours, and watt hours. There is also the possibility to show you different data points, which is really handy. And here are the results of testing the three LiPo pairs. The diagram shows the best battery of the two. As expected, the 7.2 amp hour chance S performed the worst and I had to decrease the shutoff voltage to 6.6 .6 volts compared to the others at 6.9. The Aeromax and the 6 amp hour chance SAS performed quite similar, with the Aeromax being the best, but its capacity was far too low with only 6442 milliamp hours. At around 5 amp hours in the discharging process, the 7.2 Gens Ace is totally flat. The 6 amp hour S Gens Ace is about to be empty and the Aeromax can deliver a little more power with a voltage around 7.2. So now I know for sure that I can only use two pairs of batteries in my 8 scale GT cars in 
means that they probably only deliver enough power or capacity for stock racing or training. They won't be good enough to get 8 minutes of racing runtime in a modified chassis. And this is the next batch of batteries I want to test and compare with each other. These are all 2S LiPos in round hard case packs. Um, the HRC with 4.9 amp hours and 30C is new. Also the Gens Ace RS with 4 amp hours and 60C is a new one. Um, this also has the sub C uh, case format and the oldest one of the LiPos is my Yamaha 4 amp hours uh, with 30C which is 12 years old and the case has some minor cracks in it. The best of the three LiPos will go into my Kyosho Ultima DB which is a really nice buggy and almost vintage but to get the body on and off is a pain in the ass so the LiPo will stay in the chassis also for recharging. These 2S LiPos with a round hard case are shaped like the older sub C nickel metal hydrate style batteries and are normally used in Tamiya chassis. And here are the results of testing the 2S LiPos with round hard cases. This time I set the constant current to 8 amps and the shutoff voltage to 6.6 volts because these batteries have less performance than the packs I tested before. And as you can see the HRC LiPo is the worst of the three which is not that great because it's a new LiPo. In comparison to that the 12 year old Yamaha LiPo performs quite acceptable. And the best of the three is the Gens Ace with 60C and this LiPo will go into my Kyosho Ultima DB. The other two batteries, the Yamaha and the HSC LiPo are maybe good enough for Tamiya chassis with a mild brushless system or a brush EC and motor. After discharging the pack was quite warm and it showed a lower internal resistance. That's the reason why racers warm their pack before the race. The next battery I tested was a 3S hardcase LiPo from HRC. And this has a speciality that it's sized like a normal 2S hardcase LiPo. And this time it showed really good internal resistance values and overall the LiPo performed quite good and I'm satisfied with that. LiPo which will go into my Losi Tenacity DB Pro. The last test I did for this video with the BD380 is discharging a 6S hard case pack from M-Line with 4.5 amp hours and 50C. This pack I normally use in my Corali Kronos XTR and the performance is quite satisfying and it also showed really low resistance values and the flat discharge curve. One thing I noticed was the sound level of the BD380 discharging the 6S LiPo at 10 amps with approximately 250 watts was quite loud in comparison to discharging the 2S LiPos at around 80 watts. Here's an example of that. Now we're at the end of the video and I will give you my final conclusion. Would I recommend the SkyRC BD380 battery discharger and analyzer? Definitely yes. It's a well-built little device which can be a great helper for every SC hobbyist who wants to check and maintain their batteries. It has more power than its predecessors BD250 and BD350, features three different discharge modes plus one mode to check DC power supplies and the best benefit of the BD380 is its Bluetooth connectivity so you don't need a specific charger to do battery analysis and record discharge diagrams. But it would be nice to have the option to use the computer software via USB connection. One thing I want to see in the future discharger would be the individual cell monitoring. But overall I really like the device and I can recommend it. Please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to support my channel. That's it for now. Cheers, ACO.